All right, all right, all right. Good morning, Keller Williams. My name is Brett Bishop. I am here with my friend from across the pond, Peter Hopkins. <laughs> across the pond. Which pond? <laughs> the big pond. <laughs> yeah, the big one. And this is the first episode of MCTT's Unleashed. How you doing, Peter? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am doing very well, sir. Thank you. Um, so let's get some introductions out of the way for those that don't know us. My name is Brett Bishop. I am a market center tech trainer in the Keller Williams ecosystem. Uh, I'm an agent. I'm a third generation realtor here in Charlotte County in Southwest Florida. And I have been in the tech role in it's all of its iterations for the 12 years that I've been with Keller Williams. And I'm uh, born and raised Floridian. Um, as you'll hear from uh, my co-host here, he's definitely a born and raised Floridian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's me, Peter. Tell everybody yeah, about yourself. Yeah, so um, I do a similar role, MCTT, and I look after technology for five of the market centers on the East Coast. But I happen to live in Port Charlotte, Southwest Florida, which is why I'm here with Brett. Um, so I've been doing this for two years with Keller Williams and previously with another brokerage for about five or six years, doing the same sort of technology role. And then prior to that, I was an agent. Awesome. How did you like being an agent? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I, I mean, <laughs> I was okay at it, but I've always migrated towards systems and technology. Mm -hmm. And it, and it, it, to be honest with you, I let the technology get in the way of me being an agent, which is something we can talk about today. Yeah. It's using technology for your benefit, not uh, not not becoming obsessed with it. Right. Like and, I did. Mm -hmm. And utilizing it as the tool for which it's intended and yep. not a roadblock to your business. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Absolutely. So uh, in the spirit of our Keller Williams culture, one of the things that we are going to do in each of these episodes is – go over the MVVBP. We know what that is. Uh, vaguely. <laughs> you can tell me more. Missions, uh, missions, values, vision, beliefs, and perspective. And today we're going to talk about the mission. And the mission at Keller Williams is to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. The latter being probably the most important. The, definitely the yeah. most important. There's yeah. a there's a, a few things um, that we can leave a legacy, especially in the Keller Williams system. Uh, for me, perhaps it's the fact that I gave my son the middle name Keller. No way. I did because <laughs> this company was such a changing point in my wife and I's lives. Um, so That's my, cool. my I son, have to say you can't beat that. Can <laughs> no, <laughs> that is quite the legacy. And then, uh, you know, one day he'll have my profit share legacy as well. Yeah, exactly. What about you? Is there, I know you're kind of removed from your market centers because you're, you're virtual, but can you think of anything that's come up in your business that, um, where you've seen the mission present itself? Oh, uh, well, I see it daily with agents. Mm -hmm. Um, Particularly, they're now building wealth through acquisition of rental properties, vacation yeah. rentals. When you see that happening, you realize it's significant is the legacy that can be left from a real estate career. Right. You've got to plan. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have an intention right at the beginning. Say, right, I am going to buy my first property to rent out on X date. And I want the net revenue from it to be Y. And then I'm going to repeat and keep going. So I see that a lot. Yeah. Um, I think um, there's quite a lot of support and information about wealth building um which is part of it's, it really is the bigger part of leaving, leaving a, a legacy yeah absolutely so, well in and you mentioned the word intention too and intentionality is something we're going to be talking about today yeah um intentionality is probably one of not probably it is it is one of my favorite words that uh has been coming up a lot um when uh you know we're at alc clinics <clears throat> excuse me, or lead generation uh, classes, anything like that, being intentional is really what it takes to succeed in real estate. Focus. Yeah, absolutely. And especially, yeah. you know, we're in a shift now where we're coming out of a market 
very similar to when I started back in 2003, where you could wake up and make six figures and you didn't really need any skill. Those days are gone. They're gone. Yeah. And this we're moving from a speed based market to a skill based market. And it's important that agents start developing their skills. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm being more intentional about what they do with the data. Exactly. That's key to it, which yep. is, I guess, going to be the main part of that, our topic today. That is our main topic today. So some of you may have heard uh, some rumblings about a 201 plus club or a 201 plus database initiative. And basically what that is, is research was done. Um, Keller Williams is all about data. Mm -hmm. Gary loves to protect our data too, which is awesome. And research was done to where it was discovered that agents who had 201 or more contacts in command, healthy contacts, and we're going to talk about what makes a healthy contact, but uh, 201 or more healthy contacts that were systematically being touched with smart plans, uh, their GCI takes off at that point. 119,000, I believe. Yep. And it, yeah. it just soars mm -hmm. from there, right? Yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Is there yeah. anything you wanted to add to that? Peter? Well, just to say that a contact in a database isn't really what we're talking about. This is a referral engine. It's designed to bring business to you by having the right contacts in your database and the right blend of people mm -hmm. and, and people who can be referral sources. So um, I've seen some people talk a little negatively about the 201 club and saying, well, if I had 201 Facebook leads, I'm not going to write 119,000 in GCI. And they're probably right. Mm -hmm. So it's about having a blend of lead sources, a blend of people that can bring business to you. And then what you do with that data on a daily basis so that you're bringing the most out from that, from that pool of people that can refer to you as well as people who convert. So I think it's a, Honestly, a stunning statistic that yeah. you can earn 119,000 with as few as 201 contacts, but the data's there. Yeah. So we're going to dig deep into that. Well, in in the key that you said to that though is is that you're communicating with them, right? Mm -hmm. And you're systematically communicating with them. And for me, we're talking about contacts, not leads. So you, you mentioned Facebook leads. If I, I could have 4,000 Facebook leads in my database, but if I'm not communicating with them at some point because they just came in and I never did anything about it, that, that means nothing. That's, well, not, the, that's not healthy, right? Without going down a tangent with just the Facebook leads, but a Facebook leads an opportunity to build a contact. Right. Right. So if you've got 100 Facebook leads, you might produce 10 contacts that become valuable to your business over time. Mm -hmm. So there's a different strategy, and we'll probably look at that on the next um, podcast next week okay. about how to um, turn a Facebook lead into a real opportunity. Yeah, so, so. That, that was interesting as we were planning this out. We wanted to be clear that today we're talking about contacts, but Peter has a unique perspective on Facebook leads and leads in general, really, mm -hmm. internet leads in general, and what that looks like. So that's something that we're going to address next week. Um, and, and for me, just getting back to the difference of what makes a lead and what makes a contact, the way that I've always been taught, the way that I've always trained is that a lead is a one way conversation. You have either reached out to somebody and they haven't reached back to you or they reached out to you and you haven't been able to communicate back with them. A contact is a two way conversation relationship yeah, yeah, where you're either starting to build a relationship or you have solidified a relationship. Yeah. 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 I'm not I'm not too. Um, I don't want to talk down Facebook leads because I don't want to give the impression that they're not valuable. They're highly valuable yes. because there's an intent behind what that person's doing. So if you've got a Facebook lead that's regularly responding to your um, activities such as looking at market reports or they might be looking at neighborhood nurture mm -hmm. or they're just simply um, requesting a showing you know that happens regularly yeah so so having them in the mix is definitely part of this but we want to look at the car the car base of the business first which is really is building your sphere through contacts through a database yep and then what to do with it yeah absolutely yeah. so let's talk about what makes a healthy contact when we're thinking about contacts in command and this is the this is specifically 
um, the point of the 201 plus club is that your 201 or more contacts are healthy contacts. So, and it's also, again, intentionality, mm -hmm. right? Um, as a market center tech trainer, uh, working with agents in my two offices, I see a lot of um, speed entry, I'll call it, where uh, agents are just trying to get the lead in there and they're not really being, or the contact in the database and they're not really being intentional about it. So first name is like Mike and Mary. Yeah. Last name is Smith. And that does not a healthy contact make. Um, command is designed specifically. So Mike Smith is a contact and you put all that information in to make that a healthy contact. And there's this awesome feature that is uh, the relationship that you can add to Mike and it defaults to spouse, but there is a gazillion relationships in there, just about any relationship you can think of. And then that's where you would add Mary Smith. And we're, we're going to dive into that in the live demonstration. Uh, we'll show you that. Um, but as far as what makes a healthy contact, first name, obviously, you're going to have the last name in there. Uh, email address, a phone number, a physical address. And that's the key. That's really what we're going to be talking about today, because that physical address allows for the most simple but most effective of the smart plans that we have in command and they're known as either the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture or the monthly neighborhood nurture and we're going to show you those uh so those all represent 20 percent of the contact so if you have those four you're at 80 percent. that's pretty good right and then we've got lead source so where did the lead come from was it you know church group um a uh professional association uh, Facebook lead, you know, things like that. Obviously, if it was a Facebook lead, it probably yeah. would have been before um, because th this is the relationship building of the contact. And then a uh, social account. And that just means, you know, either their Facebook page, Twitter, YouTube's in there. LinkedIn's a big LinkedIn. Yeah. 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 And then uh, a tag. So there are some tags that are already built into command. But one of the beautiful things about command is we pretty much have unlimited custom tags. So you can create all kinds of custom tags. I know I have way more custom tags than I have the actual default tags that are yeah. in the system. And not everybody may know what a tag is. So it, mm -hmm. it's a piece of data that's assigned to a lead that describes the, what that lead's about. Mm -hmm. So you might, you might tag them based on where it came from. You might be about their intent. It might be that they want a home valuation every quarter. Sure. So you could have a tag for that. So it's a way of managing your data and being able to filter it down by those tags so that you can then perform a task on your database just for the people that have that tag attached. So it's a, it's, it's actually something – you get 4% on the healthy contact. It probably should be 80%. It's just yeah. the tag. It's, the the tag – I agree. Yeah, I agree. The tag should probably carry more weight because that's when the intentionality of the contact yeah. comes in. So like for me in my business, and I'm not just a, you know, a tech guy, so to speak, air quotes. Um, I've actually been a successful realtor for many years. This, this is going to be my 20th year in the business. Um, and so I, I have become very intentional about the custom tags that I use in command for my contacts. And when you think about it from an agent perspective, I put custom tags in there like buyer 2022, seller 2022, right? Um, and what we that are allows. Now, though. I know, yeah, yeah. I know, <laughs> but I haven't done any business yet this year. So, um, but what that allows me to do then is to quickly search my database, filter my database by those tags. Yeah. So let's say we, People are staying in their houses a little longer now than they used to, right? So where are we at now? Like like seven to ten years? Yeah, I mean, on average, people move about every ten years. But everybody moves about every 20 years. Right. So which right. is interesting. When yeah. you look at the data that you have, you think, okay, how many of my people are actually going to move this year? It's a really high proportion. Yeah. 5%. Right. So if you've got a database of a thousand people, you've got 50 contacts in there that are likely to move this year, mm -hmm. which is enough to do with fabulous business. Absolutely. And by having yeah. those custom tags, let's say it's seven years. So um, I have 
buyer uh, 2015, yep. right? I can search my database, filter my database in command by buyer 2015 and now systematically reach out to those people to see if it's time for them to move on to their next property. Eight years since 2015. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So eight years ago they moved. So they're likely to be in the process of thinking of moving the game, yep. which is a great way of filtering your database down. Yeah. And that's the content. power of those custom yeah. tags. Yep. So yeah. I agree. Probably ought to have a little bit more weight, but yeah. for now it's at 4%. Yeah. Um, and then company or profession, I, I think that's one that um, we don't really give a lot of uh, intentionality to. I know I haven't. I mean, honestly, preparing for this and and researching the healthy contact scores, um, that was probably the aha for me was company or profession. If I happen to know somebody's company, I'll put it in, but I've never given thought to the profession. Right. Well, hometown heroes. Mm -hmm. So there are multitudes of programs across the state that allow for um, incentives for people who are in those groups. So we can't filter by them in our database if we don't know what they do for a living. So yeah. having having that knowledge is useful for hometown heroes, but also, um, you know, th there's different behaviors in different professions. Like some professions come with a retirement plan. So you know that around 65, 66, this person's likely to make a major life change. Yeah. stop working downsize the house or, or move to you know the coast something of that that nature so having the profession has value plus when you're making that contact it's something to talk about mm -hmm. right if you've got you know say it might be military background right so i think it's definitely worth the four percent yeah for sure yeah just knowing who they are for sure and then we um we also have uh what's known as a memory jogger and we're going to make these files available for you in the uh, MCTT's Unleashed Facebook group. Um, so they'll be there. You can also reach out to either Peter or myself, and we will get them to you. We'll post um, our email addresses so that you can reach out to us to get yeah. them. Well, also in the um, Safe Harbor group, the mm -hmm. Facebook group, there's a file section. So we'll put them yep. in there as well. So they'll be easy to find. So the memory jogger. Tell me more. Yeah, the memory jogger. So this is something that first came out of bold was the first place I saw it. And that's going to be uh, this first one that we have here, Peter. Who do I already know that isn't in my database? And so when we're talking about profession on that last um, score of a healthy contact, the memory jogger is for the things we don't think about. Who's my dentist? Who's yeah. my dermatologist? Uh, plumber, electrician. I mean, I guess we we probably kind of think about those a little bit more as agents in real estate. Um, but who cleans windows and your mechanic, personal trainer. So this is a list. What's this one? Four pages? Yeah. Oh, there's a lot in yeah. here. And I think there's about 150. Ones. I think it was 150. Yeah, exactly 150. So if you answered every question on this memory jogger, jogger mm -hmm. you would have 150 people yep to add to your database and which will be a referral contact so you bet you're building a referral engine and that takes us a long way to 201 plus oh, yeah. doesn't it oh, yeah, yeah. because i guarantee that everybody out there if this is 150 i guarantee everybody out there has at least 51 other people that they already know that are in their phone right mm -hmm. yeah yep. which is you know cleaning up your phone data is a, a, a vital thing to do mine's a mess <laughs> yeah well i've got nineteen thousand contacts on my phone wow and i don't know who eighteen thousand <laughs> so i don't but there's still probably a thousand that i do mm -hmm. so it's quite a simple process to get that data into command um using api nation you can link your phone to command so that the contacts sync and then you can clean them up awesome um, so that's, that sounds like a future episode yeah but it's that's to get the other 50. Mm -hmm. So if we get 150 people from the memory jogger, build our database that way, then we bring in the other 50 people from contacts that are kind of like a second level and then add into that some leads yeah. wherever they come from. There's multiple lead sources out there. You've got the right mix. Yeah. For the awesome. database. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, well, we're about ready to get into our live demonstration so that we can show you how this all comes together. But I just want to be clear on what the objective is. So our objective today is to learn how to be intentional with each and every contact entered into command so that you too can join the 201 plus club. And uh, the benefits 
that you get out of that is so that each contact will have all the important info for systematic follow-up and that 201 healthy contacts will lead to a soaring business in GCI for you in 2023. So, we ready to jump in? Demo time. Let's do it. All right. I'm going to move around here and we'll jump in. So, share my screen and what we really need for this podcast is a engineer who sits in the background <laughs> and prepares everything for us but but that's not but that's not an mctt no i mean we do everything yeah pretty much. we wear a lot of hats it's the concept of doing everything <sighs> that's right the show about everything all right so jumping in and we'll get logged in here now I'm, I'm going to make the uh, fully transparent disclaimer that as a market center tech trainer, my database is a mess <laughs> from training. So we're going to do the best we can here. We've heard that story about the cobbler's shoes, right? It, it, right. It, go, go on, because it sounds like English. <laughs> well, basically, the, the guy, the shoemaker, yeah. if you look down at his feet, his shoes are always full of holes and a total <laughs> right. disaster because he spends his whole life helping others. Yeah, he never has time yeah. to work on his own. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're going to jump into contacts, and I'm going to do a little thing here to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. I'm going to turn this little cursor on. There we go. All right, so when we first get into command, and we'll show a little tips and tricks as we go. Um, this is one of the things that we want to do in this is kind of present some tips and tricks that agents may not already be aware of. So we'll show those as we uh, demo uh, in each episode. So up here, the red KW, if you aren't sure what that does, if you click it, it will actually expand this menu and show you exactly what each of the applets are. Um, they are formally called applets because they are smaller app uh, applications within the larger application. I refer to them as icons a lot because that's what I'm looking at over here. Um, but nonetheless, you can open it that way and expand that menu, or you can hover over each icon and it will show you what that applet is. So I'm going to click on contacts and we are going to jump in and create a new contact. And I don't believe that I have Peter in well, let's database. use me as a test. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because I don't think I have you in here. I'm going to search and you are not in here. So that's what we're going to do. Cool. All right. So add contact. And email. Peter Hopkins at KW. And phone number. 772-299. Eight two four zero, and lead source because that's important, right? So lead source, I'm gonna say SOI. So this is one of the default um, lead sources in here. You can also create a custom source. So let's say that, let's say that I have a very specific internet lead generation program that I'm working on, right? That's not our typical, you know, Facebook or um, whatever the case may be. So I use a specific one. I can go ahead and create that custom source. And now that'll be a lead source that I can apply to the contact. I'm going to hit SOI. And then I'm actually in team settings. So this might look a little bit different, but I felt like I wanted to show this from the team side too. Yeah. Because uh, there's a lot of misconceptions still that command does not work effectively for teams. And that is simply not the case. Um, command is working fantastically for most size teams. Uh, all right. So then I'm going to go down here to tags and. I don't even know if I have a tag for this. Let's see. Strange English pencil. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to create a custom tag and it's going to be South Florida MCTTs. All right. And you'll notice that it doesn't exist. It, it pulled from my database of custom tags and it didn't show up. 
but now I have the ability to create custom tag. The important thing is, is that when you're creating a custom tag, is that you want to type it all out. Because if you don't, if I just hit South Florida, realized it wasn't there, I hit create custom tag, it's actually going to create the custom tag of South Florida. And I want that to be South Florida MCTTs. Okay, so we're going to hit create custom tag. I'm going to give it the color red, as I always do for all things KW. And then add more information. So now we're going to get into additional contact information. This allows me to put any additional emails or phone numbers that I know. And then we have a primary address. Now, for purposes of this, because this will be all over the Internet. Yes. I am not going to use Peter's home address. <laughs> so I will use the office address here. And I wonder well, if anyone I, actually lives at one, two, three, the avenues. There know. must be a one, two, three. <laughs> there has to be. Yeah, because it pulls from <laughs> Google bet, Maps, I, I right? I get some serious junk mail. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's important to realize, too, is when you are plugging in an address, it's pulling from Google Maps. Um, so uh, I guess where that could potentially be an issue is if it's a brand new development, a lot of times those addresses may not exist. So just understand um, that if it's a brand new develop development, maybe the address isn't showing up, but I haven't run into that it's, issue yet. If it's yet. in the postal database, it'll come up. Right. Yeah. All right. And then um, I'm going to say that is the same as the mailing address. And then social profiles. I'm just going to make something up here um, for my friend Peter. And... We'll just say that so you're probably wondering why you'd want to know somebody's social profile it sounds a little like off the wall but i don't i don't think it does we we are we are professional cyber stalkers in the real estate exactly. business exactly <laughs> so you can learn has there been a baby born has there been an event in that mm -hmm. that person's life that may be relevant to their real estate needs so um so yes yeah, cyber that's, stalking that's an awesome point mm. um another so there'll be two schools of thought on what I'm about to say. You can go to their Facebook profile and find out their birthday if it's published, right? However, the leader, the leaders it's of likely freaky, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But <clears throat> excuse me, our leadership, I think, would say no. The better thing to do is to use that as a point of touch to to actually reach out, have a com a, a phone call with your contacts to to gather that information so you can do it either way i know i'm gonna be the creepy guy that's stalking facebook for it um but but yeah, yeah I mean, it, it really there should is, be a touch to there reach is, out there, there is a serious message around it we don't want to freak people out right right so with the amount of data that's out there and especially some of the websites that collect data about people it, you know we've got to remember we're in a service business and we've got to people treat people with respect mm -hmm. so I think having you know some background information and what's going on in a person's life that they're, they're publicly publishing on Facebook is not weird. No, right, right exactly. But going any further than that, probably a little weird. Yeah. So yeah, keep it in check. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're gonna have at least one social, and I'm just gonna show you some of the other stuff that's in here. So we do have a birthday. All right, and that was one of the things on our list um full legal name um this is one of those things where if the contact is you know jim smith then for from an agent's perspective you're probably not going to put jim smith unless it's truly jim you're not going to put no. jim smith on a contract it's going to be james r smith or whatever that is so this is where you would put that legal name so that you know what it yeah. should be when, on you, when you're contracts. creating an opportunity it's going to take the data from this record mm -hmm. so yeah legal name's vital okay so birthday you want me to just make something up just put <laughs> a, <a> old <laughs> you want to give me at least the february the 15th is it really not really oh okay i was gonna say that's only 10 days after mine oh, I see. <laughs> No, I'm Aquarius. Are you? Yeah. Well, my father was Aquarius. <laughs> it's a bunch of Aquarius. Okay. I will uh, not subject everybody to my wonderful singing voice. We're going to make you super young here, buddy. 
Um, and then home anniversary, this is not on our list of a healthy contact, but just know that it's there. I do think it's a good idea that when you sell someone a home that you record that home anniversary. All right. And then this is where we were talking about relationships. So I can um, add uh, Peter's wife here if I wanted to and link them together and then it automatically yeah. links them. Correct. Yeah. All right. And then we have company name. And this is where we were talking about company name and profession. So this is going to be, do you have a name for the whole group or safe harbor group? Okay. O-R or O-U-R? O-R. Okay. Because here in Charlotte County, it's spelled two different ways depending on where you're at. Um, okay. Harper Group. And then we've got him in there and we can hit create company. And now that's in there. And then we'll just show you custom because custom is kind of a, uh, a neat field. Um you know, this is a place, one of the examples I like to use is uh, cus is um, holiday pies. So pies, holiday pies. You got if, my interest. If, so think about it. <laughs> it's tasty, right? Chicken pot pie. <laughs> if you think about uh, a lot of agents actually um, will do a holiday pie giveaway, right? We just came out of that season. And they'll call each year to find out what they want this is a great place to record which pie they typically get. And then when you make that call, it's just, Hey, you got apple pie last year. It seems yeah. to be your favorite. Is that what you want? So that's one use for a custom field. Uh, you could also put pets in here, things like that. Um, any information that we can use to help build that relationship with the customer and remember these things is, is just that much better. All right. So we're going to hit create. You can put things like home equity in there. It, it, mm -hmm. The sky's the limit, really is. And then you can see that uh, even MCTTs make mistakes here and there. So I'm at 96%. I clearly missed something on our uh, healthy score. So let me let me see exactly what that was. Um, the phone's in there. You know, did he put job title? Maybe it's the, maybe it is the job title that is missing. Profession. So, yeah. yeah. All right. So let's go back to about, and we're going to say MC T Tave. And that wasn't it. I didn't uh, think it was. Oh, well. Um, all right. Well, we will update that. We can live that. with it. Yeah. We'll, we we'll, hey, 96% is better than a lot of them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, okay. So now that we've got that, now what we want to do is we want to get, uh, systematic about how we're going to stay in touch with this contact, right? So our number one go-to for the most basic of smart plans that still is vital and important is a, either a monthly neighborhood nurture or a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. In my eyes, it just depends on how frequently you want to be in touch with that person. If let's say it's somebody that just bought, this is, this is something that we kind of have to, there's a mind shift that has to happen here, right? A lot of times we as agents will, will think that, well, they don't want to hear from me that much. And so, you know, I only want to reach out to them once a quarter, a mo every month is too often. And then all of a sudden they bought a house from somebody else in your office and now you're fuming because you didn't stay in touch. Yeah. A lot of that is our own limiting belief. I think most of our customers, if we were just, you know, sending them a monthly neighborhood nurture once a month so that they could stay up to date with what's going on in their neighborhood, that they well, would the, appreciate that. The thing is not everybody checks their email every day. Mm -hmm. Right. So I know as agents, we're kind of like constantly obsessing with our emails. Most people just check in with their emails and your open rate may be as low as eight, 10 percent on real estate emails. So sending two a month is going to be way more effective than sending just one, because if they miss that one, which is highly likely they mm -hmm. will, it's going to be a whole month before they'll see you again. So you could have a two month window with nothing. Yeah, and you start that's to lose that point. top of mind status. So mm -hmm. me personally, just for me, I would definitely do the the, uh, the biweekly bi one. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump in and look at that. 
So now we're going to go over to smart plans. Here's the cool thing about smart plans, um, opportunities, tasks, any of this stuff. Once I'm in a contact record, I can actually just access all of those things right here. Okay. So I'm going to go to smart plans. Um, the important thing I need to show you is just in case you don't already have uh, the smart plan added to your library. Um, and for those, you know, it all depends on how you're onboarded in your market center. I know in my market center, we use Michael Lewis marketing suite. Um, we have used Scott Leroy in the past. Both of them will add these basic of smart plans to uh, your command when you're getting onboarded. But just in case we're going to go over here again, I'm going to hit KW to expand that menu. We'll go to smart plans. And then again, I'm in the team. Uh, I'm in the team profile, but if I was in uh, as a single agent, it would just say my right. plans instead of team plans. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the library. And then I'm just going to put in neighborhood nurture for the search. All right. And then you're going to see the first two that come up, biweekly neighborhood nurture and monthly neighborhood nurture. And I want to add those smart plans. These are the two that we're looking at. A lot of these are tweaks or adjustments or total creations by other agents. And you can see um, it will actually give the author's name. Um, so we're looking at the two that are actually provided to us by KWRI. All right. And I'm going to click on, in this case, we're going to follow Peter's advice and use the biweekly neighborhood nurture. Which one's been downloaded most? Um, it was, let's see the monthly. Yeah. 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 So again, I think that's probably a bit of fear coming in. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely sticking with my. Yeah, no, my I record. like that. I've yeah. never thought about it in those, in, in that perspective. And it's, yeah, it makes sense. Absolutely. Because you're a hundred percent right. I mean, I'm, I check my email probably every 10 to 15 minutes, it seems like. Right. And most of the general world is but well it's where peter and i live we are in a predominantly retirement community they're not checking their email every 10 minutes no, they <laughs> they're probably checking it not even every 10 days no. <laughs> so i like that perspective so that's what we're gonna There's follow a lot of AOL .com <laughs> that's right yep i'm pretty sure uh user number one two and three are all here <laughs> all right so let's go to add smart plan and then it's going to say, it's going to ask you to give it a new name. So it'll typically just put my before it. You can create your own name if you'd like. I would definitely leave the main name of the smart plan though. So you're aware of what it is. And then I'm going to hit download. Now, the reason it's not letting me download it is because it's already downloaded uh, to my account. Um, but I would just hit download here. And then once I jump over to team plans or my plans, it'll be right here for me. So now I can type in bi-weekly. Make a liar out of me. Oh, you know why? Is there a hyphen in there? It's probably why. I think there is. You have to spell it perfectly. There it is. Okay. So, uh, so now you see that it's in my smart plans uh, database. Okay. So it's under my plans. So now when I jump back over to Peter's contact record, and I go right over here to smart plans, I can add him to a smart plan. And again, I, one thing that I love about command is there's like, always a search box to help you kind of filter through this stuff. So, so, so one yeah. step we've kind of missed mm -hmm. is that when you enter a contact and you put a physical address, the system will automatically add the neighborhood if it's available. Yes. So yep. the neighborhood is already there. You don't have to look it up, but you may want to review those neighborhoods to make sure that they are, you know, in line with what you're, what you're, what you're wanting to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And thank, thanks for bringing, bringing me back to that. Once I get this added, we'll, we'll go look at that because yeah. it actually shows up in the contact record right here. Um, okay, so I searched all of my plans for the bi-weekly, and then we're going to hit select. And I can either start it right now or I can start on the following date. I typically just start it immediately. I want it to go out right away. 
Uh, so I'm going to hit confirm. And then when I refresh my screen, you'll see that it shows up under the smart plan. Okay. And so even in the timeline here, it's going to show. Now, let me take you through the timeline. So uh, assignment updated. This is only because it's a team account. Okay. It was assigned to me as the primary assignee. Um, subscribe to neighborhoods. This is what Peter was just talking about. So one of the beautiful things that we have here at Keller Williams that I don't think a lot of agents realize, um, and certainly there's um, there aren't any other companies that have this relationship with nextdoor.com. And what that means is whether you're on your KW mobile app, you are on your uh, consumer website, or here in the contact records, it's actually allowing us to search right down to the nextdoor.com neighborhood. So the neighborhood that we used for, uh, or the address that we used for Peter is where the office is located here. And that nextdoor.com neighborhood happens to be Lakeview. So it automatically subscribed him to that neighborhood because it knew that that address was within that neighborhood. Now, just to be clear, especially in rural properties, if there's no nextdoor.com neighborhood that exists because it hasn't been set up yet, then it won't subscribe to a neighborhood. Doesn't happen often, but it's it, it's certainly I see it in our area with um, rural properties the most. Um, OK. So. <clears throat> Then you'll see again here that Lakeview is the neighborhood. And also if, let's say Peter wanted to keep an eye on the surrounding neighborhoods, okay? I could actually add Forrest Nelson, Murdoch Village, Chevy Chase. I can actually add these. And now you can see his primary is Lakeview. Chevy Chase has been added now. I can add Forrest Nelson. And so it's- Isn't that a comedian? Chevy Chase is. It's also the name of a street <laughs> a few blocks over. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Um, all right. So you can actually add these different neighborhoods so they can kind of keep an eye on more of just whatever the nextdoor.com boundaries are. Um, because the nextdoor.com neighborhoods, those boundaries are actually set up by whoever originally set them up. And they won't necessarily be the exact boundaries of the neighborhood as you may think of them. So to make this useful, let's put one of the neighborhoods I am interested on. Okay. Because it's going to send me some information. Yeah. So um, So I'm going to click on Add Neighborhood. Add Neighborhood, yeah. It's called Suncoast Lakes. Suncoast, I think, is one word, yeah. All right, so we got Suncoast Lakes. Punch now, what, what we're showing here is how you could use the monthly neighborhood nurture and the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture for somebody who's a prospective buyer as well, right? So that they can keep an eye on what's going on in the neighborhood that they want to move to. All right, so we'll click on Suncoast Lakes and now that's been added as well. And you can see in our timeline over here that all of these neighborhoods have been subscribed. Okay. So we have a fairly healthy contact. We do. I have are to we figure out what I'm talking still I, at 96. I, I, we're still at 96. I it's so driving me no crazy. Sleep, I have to figure out where that no 4% is. Sleep for I know. Brent, I know. I am not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to live with myself <laughs> today. Um but that's all right. That's what happens when you're live, right? It, it, not everything's perfect, yeah. but uh I'll take 96 over um if you look at most of the contacts in my database, they're gonna be at like 50 or 60 yeah. percent. So <laughs> the 96 is good. Um Awesome. Anything else you want to add? I, we're does definitely going to go take a look at this. Does spouse count towards the hundred percent? Uh, no, that wasn't in there. So uh, let's go ahead. Let me um, let's let's go look at this uh, perfect score, healthy contact. Welcome thing. to the rabbit hole. Tag. I mean, we we put all of these in. Did you add a tag specifically? You put MCTT as the lead. No, you, no. Oh, did I forget a tag? I don't think we've got a tag. Ah, thank you. You know, the 80% of what we need That's to do. That's right. That's right. And we spent so much time talking about yeah. how important the tags were. Yeah. So let's have a All tag. All right. Music. Let's jump back to the tag then. Okay. I need, that's exactly what it is. Yep. Thank you, Peter. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, right here. Tag. 
So um, you I'm know a, what you I'm, know what it was? I got to talking about it and I didn't click on it and yeah. add it. So because I remember typing in SOI. I intend to list in 23. Mm -hmm. Okay. Intend. Intend. Depend on we unfortunately we're still hurricane damage over here. So mm -hmm. it's not possible to move house very easily at the moment because everything's still in disarray. But hopefully over the coming months that will start to ease and we can consider getting buyers back into our communities. Awesome. So, so here's how I'm going to create that tag. So Peter has let me know um, through building our relationship that he intends to sell in 2023. So I'm going to give him the tag of 2023 seller. Okay. And then I'm going to create that custom tag. Why am I doing the year and seller instead of having one tag for 2023 and one tag for seller do you know i don't so right now the way that the tags filter is it doesn't look for if if i if i tried to find um if i tried to filter by a tag of 2023 and a tag of seller Everything it's going to give me everybody that has the tag 2023 and everybody that has the tag seller. It's not so specifically going to filter yeah. for those that have 2023 and seller. Right. Okay. That is something I understand that we're working on. Um, but right now that doesn't exist. So when I want to be able to filter the database, I'm creating a custom tag of the year and seller or the year and buyer. Okay. So we're going to create that custom tag. Hit save and watch our contact go to a hundred percent healthy. And it hasn't, has it? No. Okay, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so this podcast was going to last about an hour, but it's now going to be maybe six to ten hours. Oh, this is <laughs> this is totally going to drive me nuts. But I don't see. I don't think it all always gives you what it expects. So I don't see the tag. Did I not? I'm. I'm talking, I'm trying to do too much at the same time. Yeah, see, I didn't commit the tag. So <laughs> you know why? I'll tell you exactly so why. So you created I know what it the is. tag, but the tag's not in. You didn't assign yeah. it. Nope. It's because I'm talking. Trying. So, you know, there's this awesome book that Gary wrote called The One Thing. Oh, yeah. That says that you cannot multitask. There's no such thing as multitasking. And it's absolutely true. <laughs> You're witnessing it here. So what I did was I chose this and then I hit save, save down here. Add. Don't do that. Make sure you're hitting add. Okay. So you're going to put in your custom tag. You're going to um, choose the color that you want. Hit add. And now it's committed and to the save. contact and now save. And now we're at a hundred percent. Yay. Yay. <laughs> High five. <laughs> right. So good. So it was a tag that's missing. Yeah. So, um, we're going to do a recap in a couple of minutes about um, all of this, but it's quite funny we missed the tag because the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the irony, yeah, it, it really is the most important record. Yeah. It, but, but the good thing is the system's telling us to look for something that's missing. Absolutely. So if you set your intention, mm -hmm. I want to have 100% on my contacts. Yeah. So I've got the, the most robust database. It will filter out and find what the problem is. It's almost like you're gamifying your database. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it's it's like uh you know word search or the matching game or something like when you see that it's not a hundred percent okay what did i miss and i and now that i see it of course something was off because one of the things that i love about the way the contact record lays out is that your tags are always like right at the top underneath the name right it's great yeah. yeah you know um okay well we got that figured out i am happy about that so we're gonna kind of get into a recap i think of mm -hmm what we looked at. And I think the 201 and the misinformation around that, it's not 201 contacts as such. It's 201 referral sources of people you have a relationship with. So it might be better to say, I'm going to have a database for 201 relationships. Yeah, I like that perspective. I, I think, and in, in this actually hit me with my agent hat when you were first speaking to me about this. I heard referral sources and I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. But yes, it makes perfect sense yeah. because you, your sphere of influence is really what your contacts are. Mm -hmm. And that should be your number one referral yeah. source yeah. is your sphere of influence. So, so about 150 is possible. 
you may get 75, you may get 100, but maximize your referral sources as contacts in your mm -hmm. database. And then we can then fill out beyond that. And we may need to go to a thousand you know, records yeah. because we might be bringing in some Facebook leads, some Instagram leads, some Zillow, whatever it might be, leads from wherever. So once we've got that blend in place, what this system is telling us and what sorry, the analysis of the databases, I believe, could you pull that slide back up of the, um, yeah. the I think it was 30 some thousand agents. I've got more than 201 to 1,000 contacts, 30,446. Mm -hmm. So of all the agents using command, there's 30,000 that have 201 to 1,000 contacts and their medium income their average income is 119,000 in GCI. So these are specific and measurable goals that we can go after. And as long as we start with the the um, the checklist, the memory jogger, mm -hmm. to then build out your referral database, then you're going to be in really, really good position for 23. Yeah. No two ways about it. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to... I have to bring this into it, right? Obviously the good old red book and what we're talking about is what the red book talks about. Yeah. You have to have a database and you have to feed it every day. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it, I know for, for myself, so talking about my own business, as I've transitioned um, and dive deeper into the market center tech trainer role, they, there's not enough time for my business as an agent. Right. But having, a sphere of influence and a large enough database that I can still stay in touch with past clients, customers, right? I was still able to do 2.4 million in volume last year by really working full time as a market center tech trainer. Right. And all of that was referral business. Right. And I wasn't even trying. So imagine what that business could be if I just took the advice that we're telling you now and I got systematic about everybody that's in my command database and got intentional about it and played that game that we just did and made sure that every contact was at 100% where my business could actually be and, you know, still not really doing it full time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so another thing we haven't mentioned is using the, the mobile app. Mm -hmm. So have the app on your phone, the command app, with you at all times. So if you're working floor time or you're doing an open house, you can sign people up straight into your database. Yeah. So, so you're building your database because part of that feeding the database is not just contacting the prospects, it's feeding the number of people. Mm -hmm. So I think a goal of 10 a day should be a good number to start with. Yeah. And, you know, over a period of, you know, 10, 20 days, it's going to start build up to the, to the numbers that we need. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you're, yeah. if you're actively in the business of real estate, 10 is totally attainable, oh, yeah. right? Because you should be doing your two to three hours of lead generation every day anyway. So that's kind of a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Um, even those that, you know, uh, aren't all that excited about doing lead generation should certainly be able to manage at least that even if it even if it's going through your neighborhood directory or i mean there's a lot of resources that i don't think everybody thinks of to find those well, contacts we, we went to get a sandwich the other day yeah. and on the wall there was like 50 business cards for local businesses i yeah. as an agent would take one of those cards from each one of those following dad call them all up tell them where i saw them and how can we work out getting some business to you yeah. So there's 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 limitless opportunities to build a database. There's no, you know, it's just a matter of being purposeful. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one thing I want to do um, before we get out of here is I do want to see if I can bring up the memory jogger on the screen so that you can at least take a look at that. And then again, we're going to make sure that we uh, put these in the files um, on Safe Harbor's Facebook group. Yep. Safety Harbor. Safe Harbor. Safe Harbor. Yeah. Safe Harbor group. Uh, it'll be on uh, my Keller Williams Peace River Partners Insiders page as well. 
Um, and then we'll we'll also have them in the MCTT's Unleashed group. Um, and then again, you can reach out to us um, and we'll, we'll post our emails here in a minute. But let me go ahead and share this. So I'm going to share. Here it is right here. Who do I already know that isn't in my database? Um, and this, I mean, again, gamify it. Right. Yeah. I mean, we talk about gamifying things a lot, especially like when you're on teams and things like that. It it, it leads to uh, healthy competition. But this helps to jog your memory about people you may have never thought about to add to your database. So, you know, who's your dentist? Who's your children's dentist? So it's 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 digging deeper, it's not just who's my dentist. Who's the yeah, yeah. Right. Um, let's see what else we got here. Was there anything on this list that really kind of popped out at you? Well, things like who attended your wedding. I mean, they're core people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're most likely to give you referrals. But family events, family as mm -hmm. well. Um, obviously, professionals that service the home, look after your needs, at, you know, your property, roofers, yep. painters. So this one's interesting. Who do you buy gasoline from? So I... Uh, I feel like there's an old school element to yeah, that when they used the to come the, and clean. Yeah. Yeah. And a hat. <laughs> yeah. And they used yeah. to clean your windshield and all that yeah. before we had Wawa's and everything yeah. else. Yeah. Um, however, if you, if you frequent the same gas station a lot, even in a Wawa, you, you never know. I mean, yeah, you this, know, you this build... may have been written 40 years ago. <laughs> it may have been, yeah. it may have been, yeah. but I, I love the fact that it's getting you outside the box, thinking about people you wouldn't normally think about. Um, who do you buy seafood from? Well, believe it or not, here in Charlotte County, we actually have Rex Seafood that comes around to the offices and asks people what seafood they want for right. the week. Yeah, he's one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's still the traditional butcher. I mean, there's one over the road from here. The um, There's a big cow on the roof. Yeah, that's beef country. That's yeah, our favorite place, awesome. too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. They do British sausages. Can do you know? they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they're not cheap, you, but they're good. You didn't get into that enough. Where are you from? Oh, Britain. <laughs> yeah, I know, but specifically. So I was born on the east side of Leeds, which is a city in the north of England. And then I lived most of my time in another city about 20 miles away called York, mm -hmm. which is where New York comes from. Yep. This is the original York, yep. where it's um, it's surrounded by a wall and castles that are older than the Mayan temples. It's a wow. really old city. It was built by the Romans. It's called hmm. Ibrisim or something like See, that. See, that's interesting. Yeah. I wanted I wanted to know more. And then what, awesome. what brought you over here? Um, well, the 2008 yeah, the crash. disaster. Yeah, absolutely. I was in real estate. Mm -hmm. And um, we woke up one morning. It was, uh, I believe it was October. And um, the London interbanking system had been switched off. So there was no lending. What? No lending. Not like, oh, it's going to be difficult to mm -hmm. get a mortgage. There are no mortgages. That is fascinating because, yeah. I mean, we felt it here so badly, had no idea that it affected. Oh, yeah. Well, what happened was Lloyds of London mm -hmm. and others invested in these terrible mortgage portfolios, which mm -hmm. were full of subprime. Well, it was worse than subprime. It was basically anyone could get a mortgage. So well, Yeah, you just had to lie about your income yeah. and they gave you a mortgage. They called it a self-status, self-stated mortgage or something like that. Yeah, no um, documentation no loans docs. is what we yeah. would call it. Yeah, Yeah. so so it affected the world, mm -hmm. you know, and Britain in particular because of the financial That's institution. interesting. I didn't realize that. Yeah, so I got on a plane and I recognized one thing would continue is Disney would mm -hmm. continue and the vacation rental homes around Disney will continue to be occupied. So I got into vacation rentals hmm. in 2008, nine, and that's what brought me to America was the rentals. Oh. And because there was no sales, no fascinating. Mortgages, so I became a property manager, specifically Orlando, Kissimmee, yep. because of Disney World. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's fascinating. See, you learn something new every day. It's still here. <laughs> yeah. So I want to throw this comment up because um, I think this is so important. So uh, Facebook user, that's one thing that we're going to do as we go on through we'll this is, is help everybody um, learn the permissions that you need to give to Facebook so that StreamYard can actually post who you are because we'd love to know who you are. Uh, but this Facebook user says we teach the daily 10 for and ignite 10 contacts, 10 in command, 10 handwritten cards preview 10 homes awesome. that is awesome awesome absolutely awesome yeah. yeah and you do you do that for 20 days and you're nearly in the 201 club yeah one more to go yeah absolutely yeah. so that's about that's our time wrap, buddy man. yeah um 
Keller Williams family, we appreciate you being with us. I hope you got some value out of this today. Uh, and we're going to be doing this every Thursday from 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, and next week we're going to cover how to do this if you're new in town and you don't have that sphere. Yep. So we're going to build a sphere from scratch using uh, lead sources and also um, do the database too, mm -hmm. how to apply that to these contacts and turn them into business. Yeah, that's DTD2, yeah. not R2D2. Yep. Um, but what Peter just mentioned there about what we're going to do next week, uh, if you know, if you are new to the area, that hit home with me because my wife is actually the productivity coach here in our office. And so I I get to meet a lot. Of, well, as the MCTT, I get to meet all the new agents anyway. But we have a couple that come to mind right off the bat that are brand new here. Yeah. And so I'm fascinated to hear what Peter has to say next week. So again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you catch us over on the MCTT's Unleashed um youtube channel or on my realty tech guru channel please consider like and subscribing and we will catch you next week thanks everybody thank you bye bye